Um, guys, are feeling good. It's been a great past two weeks. We came here early. Uh, we came here last week. We prepared um, here for two weeks, and uh, yeah, we're feeling really good. Uh, we there's a lot that we had to work on after Wales. Um, obviously, it's stuff that we spoke about in alignment camps, and we we slowly just uh, starting to chip away to all the goals and stuff that we wanted to make better, you know, going forward. Yeah, um, quite often now we've, we've learned with the uh, box that uh, when, when people write you off, especially before uh, band against the All Blacks and they talk about how terrible the box were, etc, etc, then you guys come up with a massive performance. Mm. So this year people are, are chatting, uh, you know, the talk is a bit different, perhaps that you put up Marshall favorites. Do you, do you, how do you guys um, feel about that? Can you, you don't have that, you know, that motivation that you guys often respond to, to well in terms of public perceptions and things. How do you deal with, can you deal with this scenario? Yeah. <laughs> as yeah. Well? yeah. So you see where we, how we see it as a group is that we haven't won at home in eight years. So that's our motivation this coming week. And to be honest, Steph, we can't control what's happening in the in the in the old black camp. All what we can control is what we can do. And we as this group, we've never been in the old Blacks in South Africa. So we are that you know, that's what we wanna do. That that's our motive motive. We wanna play um uh, really well and obviously get our our, our plans and you know, start with intensity. Against our plans work and we wanna test ourselves against them. They're an amazing side, you know. We you know, they've just lost two games, you know. In the in, in the past three games, so we we've been on the other side too, yeah, you yeah. know. So we know what it feels like, you know. It takes one one game for you to to kickstart, you know. So we we're not chilling at all, thinking yeah. what everybody else is thinking. We're just focusing on what we must get right. Coach, um, see now since you guys have, have taken over, that the margins are very small. You know, in, in four of the five games that you played the All Blacks, two points were you know. What do you have to do to be on the right side of that, of that margin? Yeah, first things first, there's never such a thing as Springbok going to the All Black game as a, as a favourite. I've never had that in the future, you know, and you know the games between the two teams. It's always tough, you know, uh, like you've mentioned now the past couple of years now. It's always n nice and close and, and tight between the two teams. And we know the history of the game between the two teams. Uh, you can't underestimate anyone, you know, because of irrespective of what happened in the past previous games that you played in, in that season. The, the All Blacks game against the Springboks is always something massive, but probably for me it's one of the, it's actually the biggest game in the rugby world. The history tells you between the two teams, the World Cup trophies between the two of them, it's about six of them, you know, so that shows that these are probably one, two of the best teams in the world, you know, so we're not going to this game with the mindset of being favourites, no, not at all, you know, because of the results from the Irish series between them and the All Blacks, it doesn't say much to us because of once again, it took a world-class performance from Ireland to beat the All Blacks. So we can't underestimate them. You know, you saw what happened in the first game. When Ireland were not in a good side on a, on a day, All Blacks will put 40 points. So you can't go to this team uh, playing against the All Blacks and underestimate them. You know, they still got world-class players in that, in that, in that squad, uh, players that can any country that can always make their test test teams, you know. So, uh, for us, we're not worried about the two points margin in between. We just want to make sure that we implement our plans. And that I, I believe in this game, the team that will probably play the best according to their plan and be able to execute their plan uh, for 80, probably 82, 85 minutes, will probably stand a chance to win this game. So, we're going to have to be at our best to be able to win this game. We've also seen with the uh, All Blacks uh, so often, and uh, the game that I always refer to for this is that game which you played them at Loftus in, mm. in 2018, I think, that literally looked as if you're putting them away. Yeah. But then they still come back. They, yeah. don't, they don't go away. So how, how important is it to take that mindset uh, in, in the second half, that they listen guys, you know? Yeah, that's, the, that's what we've been actually talking about. Like, that's why I could say 
82, 85th minute, it gets to that because they're not going to stop. They're a world-class team. <clears throat> and they've got players in the starting team and on the bench who are game breakers, you know, who can do some, you can make something out of nothing. So we we want to make sure that no matter what the scoreline is, we do what we need to do and what we, we plan to do. And obviously, if there's opportunity, we'll take the opportunity on the field, but making sure that we are always aware at all times because, you know, they they do things that spark up their game, you know, they quick tap in their own half, you know, and and that sometimes lights up, you know. I mean, when we played there, there a couple of years ago, um, they, you know, the quick tap changed everything, you know, then the score was 57, nearly at the end of the day, you know, it's, 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 it's things like that, that you got to make sure you, you, you are alert at all times. With that said, with that said, Sia, um, as players, are these are moments that you that you live for. You know, playing against the bigger, biggest rivals in your own backyard, in front of a uh, capacity crowd. So are these the moments yeah. that you say? That no, hundred percent. That's exactly what when you were a kid, when you were watching. You know, I remember watching at hostel at school at Gray. Would fill up the you know if you don't go home on the weekend, you would fill up the TV room and watching these kind of games. You know, and you dream of being, you know, in, in a game like this. And I think every single guy in the squad, in the squad of 42, would love to be on the field tomorrow, you know, with the selected few that's got a job to do this weekend. Coach, um, obviously, <coughs> perception out there that uh, changes within the coaching structure um, in the short time that they would have had to implement whatever changes and sort of weakens them. Well, what do you make of what's happened within the coaching structure? Yeah, once again, uh, but we're not going to read too much on what's happening on the other camp, you know, but if you had to look at the forward coach now who's currently just joined them, someone who's been working with the Crusaders players, you know, and a lot of those players, they will probably want to perform for you because of they've got a good working relationship from the Crusaders, you know, so uh, there's a, there's positives on it and there's also on the other side maybe uh, we don't expect them to change much in a space of a week or two, you know. The, the all blacks are all blacks. They will never change their DNA. You know, like Sia mentioned earlier, on, the moment you switch off for, against them, you know, they like uh, the heavyweights in the boxing. If you switch off, you blink, you get a knockout punch. That's the all blacks. The moment in a game you switch off a bit, where you start relaxing, they can put three tries within fucking five, five minutes. You know, so that is the nature of the the team that we're playing against. And uh, once again, also having an experience. Coach like John Smith, Smith uh, being part of their coaching staff now, it, I think it's going to give them a massive boost, you know. And then uh, uh, we're not, we don't want to read too much on that, but yeah, All Blacks will always be All Blacks. They're a world class side, and uh, I, I enjoy also the, the respect between the two teams, you know. Uh, so we've been focusing on what Sia mentioned earlier on. We've been focusing on getting better in where we left against Wales. You know, if we started slow, we understand. We started slow, we were 18 three points down against Wales, and then we managed to fight back into that game. I think that's exactly what's going to require in this game. Yes, they're going to have they're going to have special moments in this game. You know the All Blacks, they're going to have special moments, but the key thing for us is to stay in the fight for the whole 80 minutes. Have you enjoyed the build-up to this game, in the sense that there's been so much focus on the All Blacks, it's almost gone a little bit under the radar, and how have you found that? No, I don't think we... There, there was a different feeling in my mindset of how I normally prepare for, for test matches, even in the camp, how we prepared. There's nothing much we changed, you know. We made sure that we do things the better way on how we normally do. We always want to improve. We always want to get better. But once again, uh, when you talk about the match against the All Blacks, it's something from the young age, you know. The first game, if you can ask me about my memory, between the All Blacks is always going to be the 1995 World Cup as a youngster watching that game. So there's, that game is always, there's always a special memory when it comes to that game, you know. So for us, playing against the All Blacks, it's, it's, it's what we live for, you know. It's what we live for. It's a special moment. We can't shy away from that that that, uh, that vibe, you know. And it's a massive game. It's a massive game. And uh, I think this is what we live for, you know. And uh, I, I have to go on and say, yes, I do enjoy the pressure going to the game. They're massive, they're massive, but because of one thing, uh, 
to be able to play against the All Blacks who've been dominating Southern Hemisphere for, for a while, do you understand? That's where you measure yourself. You know, if you can have a good start for us, you know, more especially building up to where we left against Wales, I think it will be a massive boost in our squad. Yes, that's, that's one of the key focus things in our camp. We really want to have a, a, a good follow-up on where we left against uh, Wales in Cape Town. And uh, an honest truth, you know probably, uh, probably in the next three games, you will be able to tell who's the best team in the world, you know, because I know a lot of people, they're talking about the Northern Hemisphere, Hemisphere side being the best in the world. They, in the end of their season, they finish, they've probably got five games more than us. And I don't doubt at all in the next four weeks, the log will change, which is something that we don't normally stress about, you know, but I know it's been a hype out there that we, All Blacks are not the best team in the world anymore. The Springboks are not the best team in the, in the world anymore, but I can guarantee you now, in the next probably three to four weeks, things will change. The Northern Hemisphere side will be number one in the world. Um, You're sorry, the Southern Hemisphere <laughs> side. Sorry, thank you for correcting me there. The um, imposter said yesterday that he thinks this rugby championship is crucial for the Southern Hemisphere sides, given what happened, England winning in Australia, Ireland winning in New Zealand, Wales winning for the first time here, mm. that the Southern Hemisphere has almost got a, a point to prove. How much do you think that, that's true? Not really. There's nothing much to prove to the Northern Hemisphere teams. This is about us in the Southern Hemisphere. And I don't doubt at all, the team that will probably perform the best in the next two games will probably own the right, you know, in the Southern Hemisphere. And like I said again, the team probably, if one team wins two, both these games, they will become the best team in the world. They'll be number one again. That's the honest truth about it, you know. And uh, But once again, I know on the other side, when it comes to the All Blacks, they want to beat us badly. They're desperate for a win. And that will change things when it comes to their camp, that it will give them a room. We've been there before in 2018, do you understand? Everyone talks about the highlight of our season in 2018 was us beating the All Blacks in Wellington. They're in the same boat also. They're going through tough times, and you can't ask for any better team than to play against the world champs and prove your point in that. that I think that's where, that is their main focus on the other side. You know, I know one thing for sure. We've been there also as a Springboks. They're going to be desperate to win against us, but we'll do everything in our parts to make sure that we also end up on the good side of the scoreboard. See, so, yeah, just um, ten years, well, eight, nine years ago, it was, it was you very, uh, you were very bold back then. Very bold, uh, yeah, no uh, beard. Very young, um, <laughs> playing uh, your first game here, just to come back here now. Well, that's been quite a journey. Yeah, no, it's been, well, it's well, been a journey. In those days, I had. know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a game I'll never forget. I'll never forget that game, and it was, it was special for me. And and it's been a journey with a lot of ups and downs. And yeah, but I wouldn't change it um, for, for 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 anything. And I think it's my first time playing the Springbok jersey since um, that game. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. It's a special stadium for me. Um, hopefully, I can I, I can you know play as as best as I can uh, tomorrow. Um, you know, and do my my bit for the team to. Hopefully, get the win tomorrow. I think the most important thing is we sh we just want to win at home, you know, as this group, you know, to get through that. I mean, it's been eight years, you know, I can't believe it. We have a World Cup, but we'll never win against the All Blacks at home, you know, and, if, you know, so I'm looking forward to the battle. It's going to be tough. And Coach Tech Stock said we were, last year, we were the same place. We lost two games against Australia, and then we lost the third one against New Zealand. We had to fight and find our way back. You know, it's a similar thing. Then it, it all takes, it takes a day, for for, for people to change, uh, the whole team's mentality. You know, if you get through, and it has to be like, there's no test that will be better, for the All Blacks. So that's why I know they'll be up for this game, and that's why we've just been focused on what we had to do. Coach, I know this is, um, I suppose this is something one can do about now, but. Um, you know, you guys didn't play rugby uh, in 2020, so you didn't have that uh, growth phase and straight after the, the World Cup, which I think is probably to your disadvantage if, if one looks now. How important do you think that this uh, rugby championship this year uh, can be for that growth of the team to kick on to the World Cup? You know, like Sia mentions, eight years with the All Blacks, nine years or so with the Wallabies away. Yeah, I think for us, growth is very important, you know, and we, we still want to develop as a team. As you can see that when we had an opportunity against Wales, we gave 
a lot of youngsters an opportunity, even the guys that are also have been with us that have been, got an opportunity, you know. So I think now we don't have an excuse about it. There's no pandemic anymore. We don't have an excuse now, you know. We're getting a fair opportunity where we can just play and we can plan according to the season. That's exactly what happened against when we started against Wales. We played well the first game and it gave us a room for us to try and give other players also an opportunity, you know. And I think the plan that we had then, it worked well for us. We went, I know it's not nice for us to lose against Wales for the first time in South Africa, but there's a lot of things that we've achieved as a country. You know, if you look at the players that were, got, were given an opportunity, you know, and if it wasn't for that game, I don't think we'll have the answers that we've got now when it comes to a guy like Ketley Arendt. Do you understand? That is one thing that people don't understand. We want to build a squad where we don't have to have sleepless nights when it comes to one player in your match 23 gets injured and then you don't know where to go to, you know. So we've got answers in that game. We know players that we can rely on. We know players that have got what it takes to be able to perform at this. Kettle Arendt's one opportunity that was given. I feel like he grabbed it with both hands. You could show that he's got a big heart. And now he's starting against the Oblex. So I'm very, very happy also for him. And uh, once again, on the other side, congratulations to Malcolm Marx, who's going to be playing his 50th game. It's fucking massive for, oh, sorry for the language. It's, it's, it's actually massive for, 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 for him. I've, I've been there at the beginning with him when he played his first game. I think it was in Christchurch when we lost to the Oblex, you know. And funny thing, you know, life sometimes has got a better way. To, to find its way, and now he's playing his 50th game against the All Blacks, you know. Uh, congratulations to Malcolm Marx, and uh, he's been massive in our team, and I'm very happy for him and his family also. Yes, yeah, you guys have now had a training session and you've had the captains run at the stadium. What's your opinion on the facilities and well, the future of the stadium? I love it. I honestly think <laughs> it's one of the best that um, in, we have in the country, and yeah, it's, the pitch is amazing. Um, but I think you probably have to ask more of the props about that, you know, <laughs> because that's the most important thing. If we can scrum on it, then, then it's perfect. But I really do enjoy it, and the facility is amazing. Um, yeah, it's, I'm really looking forward to playing tomorrow. I think the weather is going to be good tomorrow, so it's going to be a good day uh, for rugby. Yeah, um, Kurt Lee um, is giving away about 50 kilograms to his direct opponent. Uh, do you think there's a little bit of romance in that? Also, you know, playing against the All Blacks and, you know, this proverbial amount of time, I know weight isn't... Yeah, players, you, players, you won't be thinking about that, yeah. you know, you won't be thinking about that at all, yeah, because he trains against guys, you know, he has to tackle us the training, you know, we have probably more than that, but you won't be thinking about that, I think, yeah, um, his focus will be just on doing what he needs to do, you know, for us as a team. I'm really excited for him. He's worked hard and I thought he played well against um against Wells. The tackles that he had to make, I mean on the the eighth man Falatau, yeah. on the kicks, you know. So you the thing you can't coach hard and you can't buy hard. And he has that, you know, and um that's what we have with the with our guys and then his speed is obviously that you can't buy too and yeah, and that's what we, we get checked on, you know, as a team, your effort and how big your heart is when, you know, when, when you get tested in front of you. So, and you will have Lukanyu and Damien inside him and, 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 and Damien Velemse outside him too. So, and yeah. I think, I think also just to add, sorry, Z, to add on the question of the size mm -hmm. and, uh, and the challenge that Ketley, remember he comes from a sevens background. If you watch the Commonwealth Games finals sure. between the Fijians and the, and the South Blitzburg, if you look at the size, you probably the weight of the Fijians are double to the Springbok uh, Blitzburg. Mm -hmm. And you saw what happened on the day. You know, it shows that if you're, that's one thing I know about Kettley. He comes from a seven environment where there's no place to hide there. Mm -hmm. Each player probably has about 10 to 15 meters to cover around himself. And when there's a big guy there, there's no place to hide. Mm. So he comes from that background. We know that he's got a big heart. I, I'm, I'm not worried at all about that. I'm, yes, even if he misses a tackle, he's got a mindset where he's going to keep on fighting. You know, so I, I, I know it's a massive thing. Some people, they like to focus. Cheslin Kobe has proven to everyone. You know, he's one of the best players in the world. But everyone thought, OK, maybe this guy doesn't have the size to play 15 games. And he proved people wrong. Kwaka Smith comes from the seventh background. Kwaka, when he comes on the field now, he doesn't have a problem with size. 
he, he, he goes full out. So that's one thing on the other side. People focus on the sides, but they forget about the heart of the player. And that's one thing that I feel like a guy like Ted Lorenzi, that, that's where he's special. He's got a big heart. He's got a big heart. And uh, I, like I said earlier on, I'm happy for him that he got an opportunity. And you can't ask for any better game, you know, to measure yourself in your career than to play against the All Blacks. And I know it's going to be a massive occasion. The, the people of Mbombela have heard already the tickets are sold out. It's a massive vibe. This is one of the games that I think he will never forget about this game in his life. Sorry, guys. Just on a separate issue, while I've got you both here, doing a tribute to Sonny Tabalika, um, if I could just get your um, your thoughts on, on, on how he inspired you in your careers. Sure. You go first, yeah. Um, sure. He, um, he, he was um, you the first... His bag and yeah. His boots. He was the people. first uh, Springbok that I got to witness play as a youngster at school. Um, he went to uh, Loiso, um, and it was three uh, three streets away from my house. And I would be playing in the street, and I would hear like singing. And I would stand on the roof of my house, and I would see people at the school, and I would run, and people would just come to watch him. In that area, like Coach Stig would tell you, there were a lot of good guys, but he was always the like that's who everybody came to see because that's who we believed in uh, for our community and he played for a club that's okay spring rose that's say uh, the name spring rose he played yeah. for spring rose but we used to go Gee. when i see at the roof that he's playing i'd run down run to the school and i would sit outside and would fight to carry his bags you know and his boots as the children would sit and they would just sing for him and he yeah <laughs> He was just next level, how good he was. And um, and then obviously sing and play for for the spring walk, that just switched a light on for me, you know, to say like somebody like him who came from two streets away from, from, from me that I used to watch, he can make it, you know, it's it's possible uh, for me too. And uh, and then I got to play with him. We played, I played against him when I was 15 years old. He played for Spring Rose, uh, he was at the Lions then. Played for Spring Rose and I, um, I went um, to Hillbro with my team. We stayed at Hillbro sure. and we were playing at Vit. Then one of the guys got injured and I was just a water boy. And they looked at me. And they said we need a loose forward. Then I came and we were playing against Mutsoli Kivilika. And I remember he grabbed me by the throat that game because <laughs> I handed him off. And he wasn't obviously happy. He heard how, how young I was. And then later on, when I was in matric, I played with him. Um, I played for Spring Rose. I banked out of school and I, and I went to go play for Spring Rose and I played with him at the game. And then I remember a fight like broke up and then he he pushed me inside. He says, you don't get involved, you just play and he protected me there. And yeah, I've and um, I've, every time I've seen him, I remember P and he played against All Blacks, he could win the match and he swapped Jesus with, with Richie McCoy. The whole township was like inspired, you know, and things like that, that uh, I, I take with you know he's the first springbok to that I got to touch and 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 see and then see him progress through and those are the memories that I I take um, with me um, for from Kutsu. Yeah, what a special gentleman for me. It's uh, it's it's personal when it comes to Solitivile because it's someone that I've as a youngster grew up in New Brighton, played at the same club. Uh, he probably lived down the road about 2.5 kilometers away from my house. And in New Brighton, we all wanted to be Soli Chibilika because of he was a, a brilliant, brilliant rugby player and also a good brother to, to everyone in our club. And I became a close friend to him and we became brothers. We've shared a house together when I moved to Deb and I'll never forget. Soli treated me like his, his brother, but at times because of my stubbornness and then he, that's one thing between me and him. He will always shout to me that I always think that I'm, I'm, I'm bigger than him, you know, because of that amount of respect that we had amongst each other. And uh, I will never forget my first trip when I moved to the Sharks. You know, we took a, a road trip to Devon, me and Soli. And that, that moment is something that is always in my head. So we were sharing also a house together. And yeah, the funny thing, <laughs> Today I can drive. So he taught me how to drive in his Toyota Tez, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and he wasn't worried about the traffic. I remember there's a, road, a busy road in in Deben, which is it's got about it's got taxis and uh, trucks. 
Is it in up the stadium? There's that famous road. Mgeni road. Mgeni road. That's the one. So he taught me how to drive in Mgeni Road. And I will never forget that moment, you know. So that was a type of Soli man he was towards me. He was a big brother, you know. He was protective around uh, around me. And I, I was the same to him also, you know. We had great, great special memories together. And those are lifetime memories that I will never forget. And, and once again, people don't understand. There are certain things that are motivating us to be better every day, you know. And Soli Chibilika is one of those people whenever, in, in, at this environment, is one of those guys that I, I live for. You know, I live for people in New Brighton. I live for people from the disadvantaged areas, you know. When you get an opportunity, you know, uh, show, Soli showed us, you know. If you work hard, that's one thing that I know with that gentleman. Sure. He will go on a big night and wake up 4 sure. o'clock in the morning after sleeping for three hours, and he will smash... 10 kilometers like with the proper so we used to exercise together and he was he was a he was a machine and that's one thing that i've learned from him and i think he, that helped me also in my career you know and i hope wherever he's sleeping now uh, he's uh, he's sleeping in peace and his soul is in a better place and i know for sure that i've when we have lost soul as a brother i, I know i've gained a, a guardian angel you know uh yeah what a gentleman you know like Sia saying his name will live forever. I'll never sure. forget the first try that he scored against Scotland in Edinburgh, you know. That is something that is special for me as a person. And that is something that I, I promise him wherever he is now, I will always try to be a better person in life. Thanks to what everything that he has taught me as a person and also the, the strong mindset to make sure that you keep on working hard. And that's what Soli was to us, you know. And he would, like Sia was saying, he was very, very protective, you know. So yeah, may his beautiful soul rest in peace. Yeah, if I wouldn't be here, like, I wouldn't have somebody would, like, I would play in the street as him, do his handoffs, and that's what we do after games when we see, and I think we, like, we take it for granted, you know, and, and it's hard to come out of that, like, the mindset that you grow up, you know, you you have to grow, you know, and, and you become, you know, a little bit more, but you, you get, you can also get stuck in, the, in in that mindset, and for us, like, if you can see the person and touch them and then you see them get there, and it makes you feel like it's possible for, 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 for you to get there. And I don't think we celebrate people like that enough, you know, and, and, and look after and cherish. Like, I told Coach, like, without the mentors that I have, I've had in my life, I don't know where I would be. And there's far better talent in the communities, you know, than we see. You know, a few of us get bursaries, but there's a whole lot more. Um, that's the, that's why we go back and we start tournaments because we want we want people to get to see the the they know the the talent that's that's out there in the communities. Yeah. Uh, guys, um, I know this time.